Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us. Welcome to today's CNCF live webinar, Accelerating Game Assets Workflows with Gen AI on Kubernetes. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm gonna read our code of conduct and hand over to Casey Ayagari, Gen AI Field Solutions Architect at Google Cloud. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak, but there is a chat box at the bottom of your screen and on the right hand sidebar. Feel free to drop any questions in there and we will get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. And please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and our presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They're also available via your registration link and the recording will be available on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I will hand things over to Casey to kick off today's presentation. Take it away. Thanks everyone. Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever the time zone you are actually logging in. Uh, this is Casey Krishnjaitanya, uh, Janaya Field Solution Architect. I've been with Google for more than seven and a half years. I uh, did a couple of roles within Google, uh, last being primarily focused on helping customers on Gen AI solutions. Um, long ago, I think I think one and a half or two years ago, I start, I, I gave a session on CN, like the uh, CNCF webinar, CNCF webinar, talking about how to deploy game servers on, on using Kubernetes, like how to deploy the game servers, how to scale up, how game really works. So if you are looking for like building a game, you can always refer uh, and all like it's already there on YouTube, CNCNF webinar. So this is more like a continuation. When I thought what would be the good topic at this point in time where a lot of things are changing, I thought one of the key elements of designing uh, a game, I mean, other than deploying the servers and making sure that it is scalable and people are at, going to use, uh, I thought of shifting the gears to much more of a pre-production. So while I'm looking at what might be the great topic for pre-production, I thought game assets are huge um, time consuming process. At the same time, the imagination it takes to build a game asset uh, while on, a, on a game, uh, while, while you're building a game is, is kind of, uh, with that involves a lot of process and in, uh, imagination and innovation, thanks to Gen AI, uh, we we are at a place where we just tell the the LLM the prompt which you wanted to, and it can actually give you an idea or a starting point to where to start with. This is this is something which was not available a year back, uh, where people still used to draw them, understand the basics of how the verb, you know asset should look like and how you can actually use that asset and kind of animate that in Unity or any other project. So that's the that's a motivation for me to actually choose this topic. Uh, in this in this session, we're going to talk about uh, what changed over a period, over these uh, over a period of time, and how Kubernetes is really really helping uh, the new frameworks which are coming out to kind of deploy them, make them automated, and also make sure that these kind of newer frameworks, which can I would say change the way we approach the computing. Uh, on a large scale and democratize that to everyone. So that's what we're going to discuss. The agenda is we're going to talk about a uh, few things, a uh, few chapters, I would say. Uh, the first one being, we'll talk about Ray. Uh, I'll give a brief introduction about it. I'll talk about Kubri, how Kubernetes is really impacting and helping Ray. I'll talk about deploying Kubri on Kubernetes. What are the steps you need to do to kind of actually deploy that? And I'll also, I'll, so this is where we talk about the asset creation on stable diffusion being one of the most available or used projects out there or APIs out, uh, out there. Now, how can you serve the stable diffusion on Kubri? And I'll show you a demo on explaining the code on what it takes to actually deploy that and also make sure that you you run that on a large scale uh, with, 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 the, with the infrastructure available. So. I have access, like instead of setting up on my laptop, which might actually break, I'm using cloud. 
uh, but I'm still using Kubernetes cluster and then building on top of it. So it's not a managed solution, which I'm going to show. I'm going to uh, demonstrate the bare basics of deploying Kubernetes and then creating load pools and then essentially uh, deploying Kubri and then serving stable diffusion on top of it. So you can port this uh, solution to any place you wanted to. It's just that convenience for me is on cloud and Google Cloud. So I just deployed there. You can choose whatever cloud you want, you, 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 you want it to be on. So that's that's the agenda for today. Uh, a lot of interesting things are coming going to come up. Uh, feel free to like uh, ask me questions. I might actually check the questions at the end of it. But without further ado, let's talk about why there is a need for a newer frameworks when we already have a bunch of them. So Run Anywhere or Ray is a framework which is essentially uh, used for like, there is always this necessity for having a parallelism, task parallelism. So imagine you wanted to run Python code across CPUs, across clusters of machines with improved performance, or if you wanted to have a distribution execution, distributed execution model, which comes with fault tolerance and running that uh, and, and handle large scale up to computations. Um, if you wanted to run a remote function without squeezing the memory on your existing laptop or existing infrastructure, uh, if you are looking at like say a built-in support for reinforcement learning, I think these are the use cases or you wanted to have a high level abstraction for data processing across multiple computation machines. Uh, so these are the reasons why Ray was initially conceived by like, how can I take the existing Python code and run across multiple clusters concurrently and make them much more efficient. It's a part of distributed open framework. Uh, by the way, as I'm talking, I'll be showing the documentation of all these pages also so that you can always refer to them back and understand, OK, this this, this is Ray, this is Kubri, and all of that stuff. So whenever there is a chance, I'll make sure that I refer to the documentation, just makes you comfortable in looking at what I'm talking about and the project associated with that. So this, these are the principles of why Ray came up. And the Ray architecture is very, very layered approach here. Like um, you always have clusters, which I would give an analogy. Let's let's understand this whole architecture from an analogy point of view. Imagine you are a chef running a busy restaurant and your overall operations rely upon kitchen efficiently, running the kitchen efficiently. So I would say Ray clusters are more like cooking stations. You have different different cooking stations and workstations, which needs to be scaled up, scaled down based on the need. And um, Ray core is more of the central chef, which orchestrates the execution of Python applications and machine learning workloads across dif distributed computing environment. So core is more like a chef, central chef of the kitchen, orchestrating everything where AI libraries are tools uh, or equipment designed to cook for different dishes. So you have AI libraries, code, and cluster. And finally, you have partner integrations, which you can uh, sit on top of like AI libraries, can work with, uh, I mean, can, 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 can help you in defining the overall AI workflow, like ML workflow. So AI libraries are specially designed for, these are special tools which are designed for machine learning engineers, data scientists, and researchers. These libraries comes with unified toolkit for building and deploying uh, machine learning at scale, where AI core gives you that orchestration piece, uh, which will help you, you know, assign different tasks, or, I mean, to different, like in an analogy way, it assign, helps you assign different tasks to different shifts. Whereas the clusters are like the workstations where the actual work happen. And these keep on like, it has a, I'll talk about the clusters in a while, but these are like low level computation framework. Uh, 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 sorry, these are the actual hardware which this is running. And these clusters, the beauty of the Ray framework is to make sure that you run it anywhere. The clusters can be on your laptop, on your, any of your cloud, or, or, or you wanted to like, run it on Kubernetes, you can do that. And Kubernetes runs on it. You have an abstraction layer where Kubernetes maintain the clusters and then it can run anywhere you want it. So that's the whole layer structure or the framework for Ray. Um, if you go one level deeper into this, um, 
So these are the set of like, just to read it, these are set of workers connected to common red. Like I'll talk about ray head in a while, but these are the worker nodes which are connected to a ray head. Clusters can be fixed size. They can auto scale up and down as need basis. Um, like ray core is an open source Python general purpose distributed computational library uh, that enables the developers to scale Python applications. Whereas uh, AI libraries is where you have a set of libraries to you can you can always work upon for simple scaling of AI workloads. And there is a huge ecosystem actually piling up on top of it. So think of this way as Ray Core, the underlying and the foundation, whereas AI, AI uh, libraries are building as a toolkit for on top of it, where you you have toolkits for different purposes. You have you want uh, there are five native libraries, I would say, which that AI libraries like wrap the distributed uh, uh, that distributes specific ML tasks. So you have Ray Data, Ray Train, Ray Tune, Reserve, and Ray, Ray Rlib. So these are the free, you know libraries which think of them where these allow you to like process the data. Uh, using the clusters available, you can try in the data with the clusters available. You can tune the data. Sorry, you can tune the models. You can try in uh, the model and you can serve the model. So in this discussion, we're going to talk at the end of the discussion. We're going to speak more about the serving part of it, but wanted to let you know that you can actually go ahead and integrate with the partner application like to libraries available where you can process the data at a large scale, you can train the data at a large scale, you can tune it and you can serve them. Oh, by the way, you have fault tolerance built as part of Ray, which uh, like AI libraries, which means any job which can, if it fails uh, or if there is a resource dis disruption, uh, it can actually resume and make sure that the jobs actually continue to work. And this is done by AI core. Uh, so you always have the support of having your tasks run properly without any issues. Now let's go and understand the cluster part of it. So the cluster architecture, it might be little, like I borrowed this from the Ray website directly. So you can always refer to this. The cluster architecture consists of every cluster has one, like a, has one node, which is designated as a head node. And there are a couple of worker nodes. Uh, head nodes and worker nodes kind of are similar to each other. They have worker process, they have a schedule and an object store. But what differs from head store to worker node is the driver process, global control store, and auto scaler. So these are responsible for scaling out the job, you know, for scaling, controlling the store and auto scaling part of it. I will, the recommendation is not to run any workloads on head node, but you can actually use head node as a worker node to kind of run the worker process. So typically the driver process here is the process which actually takes the Ray script, assigns or submit the jobs via jobs API to the Ray clusters to execute on. Now we, we have seen like each cluster by the way consists of head and worker nodes. Now we discussed about clusters. Now someone needs to orchestrate these clusters and this is where Kubernetes comes into picture. So Kubri of or deploying a Ray on a Kubernetes and that project is called Kubri. So what Kubri brings really on board is the efficiency at, associated with Ray and also the efficiency associated with Kubernetes as a whole to kind of orchestrate the Ray applications or, or like manage the Ray clusters using Kubernetes inbuilt uh, uh, functionality or inbuilt uh, awesome features that Kubernetes already have today. So who's going like essentially the whole question of why Kubernetes comes in? Who's going to run the nodes or who's going to run the clusters? And this is where Kubernetes comes in handy. So this is how Kubernetes, like what we so far discussed, is the importance of Ray, the libraries associated with that, the AI libraries associated, how the tasks, are, how the cluster actually is looking at, how how the cluster looks like. And now we switched on to Kubri or Kubernetes a way of you know, orchestrating the cluster. Now Kubri is an open source Kubernetes operator. So operator, like I, 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 
look at this way the the ray operator is more like a software that creates deletes updates ray clusters in kubernetes so assuming i'll give you an analogy again here so imagine you're running a pizza restaurant and within that restaurant you wanted to manage the the uh someone needs to manage the uh overall settings which is you like the you, as the owner who manages the entire uh, restaurant there is always this menu which is the kubernetes manifest like look at chef chefs who are actually running who are executing the tasks are like kubernetes pods whereas the kitchen staff is more like uh the controllers like the kubernetes controller uh, which actually done uh, does a lot of things or you know ma make sure that the cpu is fully utilized or managing the nodes and cleaning up this you know cleaning up something which is not uh which is leftovers so kubernetes operator is the one who does who does this overall work look at them as like more of a delivery person who understands everything who understands the menu who understands the pizza who understands how to automate tasks and make sure that they continue to operate this overall restaurant in a much more efficient manner so operators is a pattern within kubernetes where you create custom resources to manage certain applications so there is a huge blog post i mean there is a documentation about operation patterns if you are very if you are interested in looking more and understanding more you can always refer this but look at this more of a software extension to Kubernetes that uses custom resources to manage applications and their components. So that is the model right now. A lot of a lot of products are using to kind of build or extend Kubernetes functionalities. Kubray is not, no different. Kubray has an operator. Kubray has an auto scaler and a head node and worker nodes like the, how you have seen the the head node and worker nodes here. So have the overall comp that that actually interacts with ray core apis and then where you can actually build applications so the beauty of kubra is it can sit on any kubernetes environment and start actually managing the cluster for you so three kubernetes resource definitions which comes with kubra are ray cluster ray jobs and uh, uh, sorry, Ray Cluster, Ray Job, and Ray Service. So these custom resource definitions are essentially used for managing Ray Clusters. Um, I wanted to like show you one of the, I mean, one one one, one of the uh, web pages we have here, like which is uh, which talks about Ray Service. So Ray Service is more of serving the serving applications using Ray or the like Ray. So there is so Ray Service, Ray Job, Ray Cluster are three different CRDs, which define a cluster, which submits a job, or ML job, or which kind of serve an ML API or, or serve a uh, API like stable diffusion from 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 Kubray perspective. So three three CRDs for three different reasons for managing clusters or managing jobs or managing services. So you will be going to use these one of these to kind of in this session we're going to talk about more of ray service but wanted to let you know that these are available for ray i mean these, these three are essentially important crds for building any cube ray cluster so what it takes to build a stable diffusion on Kuban, on on cube ray so we have seen the cube ray basics where uh, um the like how kubray can sorry how kubernetes can actually manage the ray clusters but looking at serving how how to serve the stable diffusion uh it's very very simple the step i'm going to explain the step-by-step -step process we're going to take questions on these if there are any questions later uh but let's talk about the stable diffusion uh process actually so the first step is creating kubernetes clusters so simple commands, I haven't gone to create a lot of GPUs here. I created E2 standard four, and I created an NVIDIA L4 node pool in that. So node pool is like having same similar, look at that where you have clusters of similar configurations, 
where we these two steps essentially create the Kubernetes application on Google Cloud. So this is how the clusters look like once you create them. So you have the nodes associated and the node pools associated. You have storage, observability, everything, and built into it. Very, very simple step, no compli nothing fancy. It's all about creating Kubernetes cluster. And this is the second step which comes where you create Kubernetes Kubri operator. So Kubri operator can be served using Herm. So you can install Kubri operator directly. So once you install this, you don't need to worry about that is going to take care of your application, whatever you deploy on Kubri. So which means once you install the operator, you will see the workloads where you can see the Kubri operator. And once you have, I'll talk about the stable diffusion in a, late, in a while, but the Kubri operator is which keeps on running. This is a deployment which keeps on running uh, that will essentially manage your applications on Kubri. So that will make sure that the stable diffusion is served properly. Uh, I'll talk about how you deploy that, but that's a important step or the next step of making the Kubernetes cluster more of a Kubri deployment. So once you once we have the operator ready, the next step is about deploying Kubri. And this is where we will spend some time on understanding what the Kubri looks like. So let me know if you can't see or it's, it's too smaller. I'll try zooming out a little. I hope everyone can see my, uh, it's, it's visible. So it's very straightforward. We have an API version and a kind of ray service. Uh, so this is the code base. By the way, the code base for stable diffusion, whatever is available online is not working. I kind of refactored that for this demo. So that it's publicly available in GitHub if anyone wanted to try it. But essentially, I'll also discuss about the code base in a while. So the Ray cluster configuration is, is, is mentioned, which means it takes the cluster configuration and the image associated with that, creates a head node as well as a worker nodes configuration. So the tolerations are to make sure that wherever the GPU is available, it kind of actually assigns the worker nodes so that you can take advantage of the GPUs. Straightforward uh, service kind or uh, straightforward de de deployment. All we need to look at is making sure that we point out the endpoint, the stable diffusion endpoint within the code. And the code for serving the stable diffusion looks like this. So anytime a user have an input, user submits like a get request called slash image, imagine, um, that will be passed to fast API, which will be again passed to raise stable diffusion, which will serve the, which will kind of actually serve the stable diffusion uh, 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 endpoint. And that is what actually takes the request, creates or kind of creates the image and then pass it on to API so that it can be passed on to the endpoint. So this is this this whole code base is essentially what it takes to actually take a prompt and then come up with an application or come up with an image as an output. So two functions or two classes, I would say, uh, it is API ingress and stable diffusion, and there is an endpoint which binds both of them, creating a connection between API endpoint as well as the model. So the third step is all about just deploying the race. So reiterating or repeating it, once you create a cluster, deploy the inst uh, install the Kubri operator. And once the operator is installed, you deploy the race service, which comes along with the cluster configurations associated with that. Ray service is essentially for serving. So you can find more details about that uh, Ray service uh, uh, in the documentation. Uh, you can also find different ways or different, like if you wanted to submit a job or ML job, or you wanted to just create a great cluster configuration, you have uh, quick starts you can always refer on the documentation page. But in this scenario, it's just a service for us. And the last one is once we have, you will see the deployment from infrastructure point of view. Uh, you you when, once you go to those endpoints, 
of the services exposed, you'll have a head service and you'll have a you have a stable head uh, uh, stable diffusion head service and stable diffusion sir and this is where your kubernetes oh, sorry this is where your stable diffusion actually is running to serve and the head service will give you a dashboard for an understanding the overall cube so let's talk about or let's see how the dashboard looks like So this is the endpoint. By the way, before we go there, uh, this is what I did. So just uh, trying to figure out. Okay. So the last step is forwarding the ports. So I take the head port and forward it locally to 8265. So the ports where these head ports head head is running is on 8265, and the server will be running. Uh, server will be running on 8000. So kind of actually forwarded both ports internally. And this is what you will see the local host 8265 will actually give you the overall dashboard, which will clearly once deployed will give you the jobs, clusters, servers, actors, metrics, and logs, and everything. So have, we haven't gone deep dive into Kubray, but it is worth it is understanding the different objects available in Kubray like actors. Uh, but in this context, we will focus on jobs, servers, and clusters, where the cluster is where you will have the head and the GPUs, like the the the, the process is actually running here. You can see there is we have a GPU cluster running, and we have a normal head cluster which doesn't have GPU associated with that. And this is where you will see the stable diffusion ray like will be executed once we submit a job, which I'll show you in a while. So the serving part, you will see all the logs associated with this. You will see whether the status of these stable diffusion application is healthy or not, and what's happening. So if you have any errors while deploying the code base, if you wanted to understand what's happening when the code is deploying, getting deployed, you can always go to deployment section. You will understand how the code is actually getting executed. So I have a few cases while I'm preparing with this demo where the code is not working and there were some errors. And this is where you will point them so that you can update the code accordingly and start actually deploying it once it runs on your local machine. So a very, very intuitive tool. And you also can actually look at jobs. If you have jobs submitted, you will have a job submission status here for ML jobs specifically. So very useful uh, information uh, as a dashboard provided, which will help you understand what's happening along with the metrics and logs, which you can download or integrate with Prometheus if you wanted to. So huge uh, uh, added useful information, a lot of useful information for the jobs we actually execute. So the last one, let's execute a request. So it's just a small Python code where the prompt is a cute cat dancing on a grass. And this is where this endpoint can be used in multiple ways. You can democratize this within your gaming, uh, uh, within your game organization or game development organization, where anyone who can actually write a prompt can get an asset, keep on updating the prompt and get an asset by referring to this endpoint. Right now, the endpoint is forwarded to port of 8000, but you can actually choose to deploy it or serve it from, like, forward it to wherever the way you want it. So let's execute this and see what is happening while we are executing this. Let me take the terminal and uh, let's execute. So as soon as it is executed, I wanted to quickly show you the serve part and the stable diffusion part. See, you can see the starting, you can see the code actually executing. You can see the cluster, the memory, you can see the GPU utilization and the memory, you can see how much of GPU is being utilized. Everything is so clear on it. It kind of helps you understand what's happening. What is the utilization? There is an auto scaling feature, which I did not enable, but if you enable that, it can actually scale up to multiple GPUs or, or, or it can create multiple worker processes to kind of handle this request at a large scale. So let's see the output. Yeah, response is 200 output is uh, uh available let's look at the output just give me a moment okay so here is it here is the cat we have 
So this is this is how easy it is to serve L efficiently the large language models, uh, especially text to image with the help of GPUs, where we don't need to manage any cluster, just the cube operator actually managing a ton of stuff for us, helping us to scale and making sure that we have an efficient cluster management with the help of Kubernetes. And we also have cube ray, sorry, ray, which is distributed in a uh, library, which can help us code in a way which can help run Python code in distributed environments without any hiccups. So few things which I wanted to talk about from uh, from a very uh, sorry wanted to make sure that we all refer to that is the first one very good overview of Ray very important if you are looking at to understand the Ray uh, in detail what it takes to or why this was built a uh, different objects and this is where I was talking about where what are tasks and what are actors like actors are mostly classes you can see while you actually start writing code objects are the values or objects which can be processed between different uh, actors. Uh, so you can see all this information available in, in, in this particular file, which I'm going to link that, which will help you understand how Ray is different as a whole. The second one, which helps us, I mean, this is an official documentation anyway. Uh, the Ray project is available in Kubray. The so Kubray project is available at Kubray, where you can see the Kube, Kubray core which is officially maintained by Kubray, whereas API servers, Python client, and Ray are community components which are available for, for, for using Kubray. Uh, operator pattern, very important if you are actually extending Kubernetes capabilities. And if you wanted to understand the whole Ray architecture, uh, I love this document, which helps you to understand the overall philosophy, why what was designed principles, the architecture, and how uh, like how, how this whole uh, Ray architecture was initially conceived and how this was actually evolving. So very big documentation, but really helps you to understand what it takes to build a distributed environment like this or a library like this, and how this can be automated to a large scale. So these are the few references which I thought might be useful. Um, the last but not least, uh, what I wanted to show is there are a couple of examples, not just about stable diffusion, available uh, here, which you can play around with Ray Core. And Kubray also has a lot of examples associated, like deploying that on Kubray cluster where you have step-by-step -step process. There were some changes which needs to be done, like the documentation has some updates needs to be done. For example, the, the script which I just showed on the stable diffusion, I up to I updated this script with a lot uh, the diffuser, latest diffuser, latest ray version, and the code has been updated to make sure that it is pointing out to the code which is executing properly. So make sure that you always validate these scripts. They are kind of old, but they still need to be like, once you update them, you will see that they work efficiently. So uh, the whole example gallery contains, contains a lot of examples where you can go ahead and try for Ray, but Kubray also has a bunch of examples. You can go ahead and understand and summarize, like you wanted to create or try and expose strong Kubernetes you go, with CPU only, you can do that. So there are a couple of examples in this, which you can actually go ahead and use them uh, or try, try them on your own. So that's, that's pretty much from the Ray and Cube Ray perspective, hope this is helpful to kind of think of deploying or serving models, which are huge uh, on a cluster where you don't want to manage, but take advantage of existing Kubernetes and Ray frameworks like Ray and how it also amplifies the importance of having Kubernetes to do the heavy lifting, even though the libraries like Ray are coming up very recent and they're actually changing the way we look at ML applications. The relevancy of Kubernetes is still there, which um, uh, which is actually helping 
all these new projects to kind of amplify and reach out to reach out to all the clouds or all the deployment patterns available out there. I'll pause here. That's uh, yeah. That's that's all I have uh, from from the discussion point of view. I'll take any questions if you have. Thanks, Pete. Oh, oh, last one. Uh, one thing which, uh, last thing which I wanted to is. Companies are actually investing a lot on Ray as a whole. For example, you can see Ray on GKE as a solution directly available on GKE. I think you will see applications like these coming up more often, more often in clouds. So you don't longer need to actually build cluster and do a lot of deployments. You can take advantage of pre-packed solutions like these. And there is a version of Ray available for um available for machine learning where you can actually create a cluster in one click so there are versions where ray is becoming more and more de facto, de facto uh, uh service for manage or, or running python code or uh, distributed python code so what i showed you is the internals but you don't need to do all the process you can deploy the prepackaged solution by the way, this prepackaged solution is available as part of uh, uh, GitLab, GitHub code base. So you can under there is a Terraform script available online, which is free, which you can actually take advantage of that and deploy that on on Google Cloud, or you can actually deploy it anywhere if you want it. So wanted to let you know that prepackaged solutions are also available. You don't need to do the heavy lifting on your own, but it is very important to understand the step by step and basics of it so that you understand what is the step it is taking, what are the what is QP operator, and how you can actually serve or deploy applications on top of it. I'll I'll close it with that comment. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? Be sure to add them into the chat now. <laughs> we should have some hold music for this part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if there are no questions, um, thank you, Casey. Thanks for a great presentation. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. These uh, This will be available online later today. And um, join us for another CNCF live webinar soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day.